This is PACE, or at least a rendering of what it will look like once it's on orbit. PACE stands for Plankton Aerosol Cloud Ocean Ecosystem. It's a mission designed to help us better understand how the oceans and atmosphere exchange carbon dioxide and the impacts of aerosols for phytoplankton growth in the ocean based on the ocean's color. It's about as long as a basketball net is tall, and its width and depth are each about 5 feet or think of a typical park bench. PACE is an important new tool to help us better understand our changing planet. It's designed to build on more than 20 years of Earth observation data from other missions and work with other spacecraft currently on orbit. On February 1st, SpaceX encapsulated the spacecraft inside Falcon 9 payload fairings and rolled it out to Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station ahead of its planned launch. We got the opportunity to go inside the clean room, see the hardware before it was encapsulated into the payload fairings. Let's take you inside. This is PACE as it was about a month ago, going through its final processing before it was fueled for launch. And this is Brian Kenz, the deputy project scientist who walked us through PACE's three main instruments. All the way at the top is the ocean color instrument. It's the main instrument on the mission. It has a two and a half thousand kilometer swath and sees from the deep ultraviolet uh, all the way into the infrared. And so we'll see the whole globe in full color in all its glory every day. PACE project scientist Jeremy Wardell explains that the leap forward with OCI is akin to what the James Webb Space Telescope is doing for astronomers and planetary scientists. Where we are today is a box of crayons, because we measure color, that's what we're doing. That is maybe eight crayons in that box. And what we're delivering is the box of 128 crayons. So all of these additional colors of the spectrum that will allow us to see things we can't currently see. Understanding that ocean color will tell researchers about the microorganisms living there called phytoplankton. We spoke with the ocean biochemistry lead for PACE to learn why that's important for those both in and outside the science community. All the oceanic life starts for phytoplankton. That's where your energy comes in, that's where your carbon comes in. So everything that's going to happen later on in the ocean is determined by these little guys. So knowing that, it has implications for everything. For example, you're a surfer, you want to surf. God, the ocean doesn't look that blue anymore today. It looks kind of maybe greenish, maybe brownish, maybe a certain color, but like you can use this information if you, I mean, if you're a surfer, but you can also use this information if you're like a coastal manager who wants to show people who are coming there for tourism that it's a, it's a phytoplankton bloom, but it's not a bad bloom. So you can use that information to actually say something about ocean health and save your tourism. Back inside the clean room, Ken shows off the other two PACE instruments. The next instrument down uh, with the black baffle is called the HARP-2 instrument. It's uh, an acronym is the Hyperangular Rainbow Polarimeter. So that's because it has lots and lots of viewing angles and so you'll be able to see the cloud bows. And the, the uh, shape of a cloud bow tells you what size droplets are in clouds. The next instrument down is another polarimeter. It's uh, SPEX-1, the spectral polarimeter for planetary exploration. Um, they are, this is from uh, ESRON in the Netherlands. Um, originally, they, they were planning on flying an instrument like this to Mars many years ago, but now it's going to be flying and looking at the Earth. And it uh, looks from the ultraviolet also into the near infrared. And so the two polarimeters are very complementary to the, the main spectrometer instrument and provide uh, the ability to characterize particles in a way that you can't from just looking at the spectrum. The long and short of it is this combination of instruments is unlike any that NASA has or any of our international U.S. partners have. And there's no plans for them as well. And this new information is going to create this renaissance in how we understand different aspects of our home planet. So much so that one of the biggest hurdles the science community is going to face is how do you take the sheer volume and do something with that? Like, it's scary. <laughs> it is so much more new information that we have. And with all that new information, like Webb, the PACE team hopes that the scientific community can learn even more about the Earth than what is currently anticipated. We're going to see things that we didn't even dream we were going to see, right? So I hope that they're going to discover some things that they didn't expect to discover, that they're going to figure some things out that were not part of the plan, right? I mean, they have a lot of plans for what they want to learn, what they want to see, but there's always 
room for discovering new things. So, so that's what excites me the most, and I hope that the instrument is capable of delivering data like that for them. Reporting from the Astrotech Cleanroom in Titusville, for Spaceflight Now, I'm Will Robinson-Smith.